And we no longer see us as being part of a historical movement, a historical legacy that God began years and years ago. And every generation is supposed to do better than the next generation. And to whom much is given, much is also required. In this generation of the church, we're the wealthiest generation of the church in African-American and poor income communities in the history of the planet. And rather than using our resources to try to reach the next generation and try to build into the next generation, we're more concerned about our own comfort, our own convenience, and our own pleasure. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side. Now, I know this won't be popular, but it's not time to be popular right now. I hope I'm wrong. There are times I want to be wrong to shut my mouth. But in August, the T.G. Jakes extravaganza will come to Charleston. I want to know what difference is it going to make. Because I see this more as an economic development movement. They talk about Charleston going to generate $7 million when T.G. Jakes come to town. I ain't heard nobody talk about we're going to get anybody saved. Is a revival going to come to the town or to the city? Are y'all listening to me? If it's just about economic development, then we might as well bring Nas or Snoop or some of those people to town. I ain't got time to be a part of no spiritual carnival, no sideshow. It's late and it's dark. And our city is in turmoil and our children are trouble. And if God doesn't run to heaven and if God doesn't come down to help us, we're in a bad situation. We're in a bad situation. And so Jesus says, if you'd recognize what you really needed, if you knew how close you were to judgment, if you knew how close you were to judgment, I've said this before, I will say it again, you know most, the most dangerous society to live in the most dangerous society to live in is a free society where the children don't have a conscience. But they got access to mind-altering drugs and they got access to firearms and weapons. That's the most dangerous society to live in. And the judgment will be your own sons and daughters that turn against you. The own sons and daughters of this nation turns against this nation, say, because you neglected us. You didn't take care of us. You didn't protect us. You didn't stand up for us. And now we're going to turn against you in judgment. So Jesus says, for the days will come, verse 43, and I'm through, will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side. Now, he was talking about Titus that would come in 70 A.D. and destroy the entire city of Jerusalem. Not a stone would be left on top of another. The whole city would be encircled, and they would end up in a heap of dust and ashes. Verse 44, and it will level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. God is not going to tarry with us long. If judgment begins first at the house of God, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? My prayer is that we would turn our hearts toward the Lord. And that we will cry out to God. And that we will have a greater concern than what we currently have over the lostness of the people in our own community. And in some cases, our own family. And that our passion will be to see God move. To bring people to repentance. And faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we might see a revival in our lifetime. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot to have a church service. The cults have them every week. Who don't believe in the Lord, don't believe in 
the Bible, don't believe in Jesus, don't believe in anything that we believe in. But it takes some effort to fight for the souls of people. It takes some effort to engage in prayer, warfare, to pray that God will move in a mighty way. It takes some effort to engage in conversation with people. It takes some effort to try to, to, to penetrate situations and circumstances, to at least be a light and to be a testimony that people might be saved. Lord, send the revival. Lord, send us revival. Lord, send us revival, and let it begin in me. Father, we pray that as we see the window closing on our culture, on our nation, on our state and our, and our city, that we would take advantage of this opportunity we have to still preach the gospel with relevance, with power, with conviction, with courage to try to engage in conversation and dialogue, to try to talk to people about the condition of their soul, the need for a Savior. And Father, in particular, I pray that, pray that we would turn our hearts, as Malachi says, that we would turn our hearts as fathers and mothers toward the children in our community. They deserve a chance. And Father, as I have read about the sordid stories about the family on Frame Street. My heart has been moved about the living conditions that those children have lived in for so many years. The damage done to the 14 year old, the damage done to the six and seven year old. I would pray, Father, that you would send someone to minister to, to them in a way that will reaffirm their dignity, their worth, and their value. And even their parents and the adults that were around them that were engaged in such a sordid, degenerate, debased lifestyle, there are still souls for whom you died and shed your blood. And maybe why in the confinement of South Central Regional Jail, maybe their attention is arrested for their need for a savior that you will send servants to preach the good news of the gospel, the grace of God, and maybe salvation will come. For those here this morning, Father, I would pray that you would bring deliverance to some who may be captive, who may be tied up because of guilt from the past, because of shame, because of deep hurt that they may have experienced, Father, and they've been so wounded by that hurt, they've been unable to move forward. I pray that you might bring healing today and that you would unloose them today. Help us learn the lessons that we need to learn as a church, as to what we need as a church to be what you would have us to be. You have granted to us great privilege, great resources, and great opportunity to serve you. Help us to do it, Lord, so that you can be glorified, souls can be saved, backslides can be reclaimed, and the kingdom can be advanced. And Lord, help us to live with such clarity that we are consciously aware of the fact that the nations of this world are moving toward judgment and knowing the terror of the Lord, we'll be trying to persuade men, women and boys and girls. In Jesus' name, amen. Every head bowed, every eye still closed. There's one here today, and God has spoken to your heart about your need to be saved.